While the computer does everything in binary, that doesn't mean that you want to do everything with binary. However, you don't necessarily want to do everything with decimal either, because the conversion between decimal and binary is a little bit tricky and is somewhat error prone. The reason why we mainly don't want to do everything in binary is because there are just too many digits to it. Take a standard house address, maybe 7582. Okay. What is that in binary? Well, it's a long number. And it actually has 13 digits in it. Uh, and you don't want to have to memorize all of them, especially because they're all ones and zeros. It's rather hard to, to work in. So instead, we typically use some other number systems, hexadecimal and binary. So let's take, and we're going to copy this value. And let's go ahead and make a new window. And we're going to paste that value into there. Now, why do we like hexadecimal? Well, we like hexadecimal because it happens to be a power of two. Of course, two times two times two times two, two to the fourth power is 16. And if we think about what each of these digits represented, this is the ones digit, two, four, eight, and this right here is the 16's digit. So everything before that was less than the value of 16. 32, another multiple of 16. From here on out, everything's a multiple of 16. 32, 64, 128. Turns out this next digit here is actually 16 squared, or 256. And then this digit up, digit up here is 16 to the third power. So by breaking it into groups of four, we're getting powers of 16. We have this, which would go into the lowest digit. This would come next, this would come next, and this would come next. Okay, so that's how we can do easy conversion uh, from a binary to a hexadecimal, and why 16 is a nice power. It's because it is a power of two. There is one challenge to it, though. In binary, everything is a zero or one. In decimal, it's a zero through nine. But in hex, we need some extra characters in here. And what's standard to do is we start off with the first part of the alphabet. So we take the first six letters of the alphabet, A through F, and I'm choosing capital here. You don't necessarily have to, to use capital letters depending upon what your application is, to represent the digits of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And of course, once you get up to 16 in hexadecimal, 16 is written as one zero. So these are our digits. Now how would we take and convert this number into hexadecimal. Well, we take each one of these groupings and we convert it independently. So this grouping here, well this is an eight plus a four plus a two plus a zero, which is 14, which happens to be E here. What about this grouping here? Well, it's an eight plus a one, which is a nine, so just nine. This grouping here is an eight plus a four plus a one, which is 13, which is D, and of course our top group, which only had one digit in it, is a one. So that binary number here can be represented in hex as 1D9E. And Scala actually allows us to type in literals for this. If you start with a zero X, 1D9E, I can use capital or lowercase, there we go. We get back the number that we started with. So these are equivalent in uh, values. You can also take our decimal value and we can ask for the hexadecimal uh, version of it and indeed 1D9E. Hex is used in quite a few different places. If you've ever worked with websites, you will have seen colors that are encoded in hexadecimal. Uh, turns out it's very handy to pack things in, uh, pack a full color with red, green, and blue into a single numeric value, and hex is a good way of representing that. Less commonly used, but still, uh, you'll see it occasionally, is octal. So let's start with our same number again. Now octal is base eight. So I don't have to introduce any letters because we're just going to use the numbers 
0 through 8 as our digits. But because 8 is 2 to the 3, we no longer group by 4s, we group by 3s. One of the things you might have noticed here is that I did group from the low end up. And if you think about it, that's the only way that makes sense. If I had grouped from the high end down, we would have gotten a very different answer and it would have been very wrong. We need to make sure we do the same thing in octal. So I'm going to group these off by 3s, like that. And then I'm going to convert each one over to an octal digit. So this is 4 plus 2, or 6. This is also 6. This is 3. And this is 6. And there we go. So that would be the octal representation of 7,582 decimal. Very easy to go back and forth. Um, for going the other direction with the hex, if I gave you this, all you would do is write down a 1, and then write down the 4 digits for D, and then write down 4 digits for 9, and 4 digits for E. Same thing down here. You would write the 3 digits for 6 and 3 appropriately to get back the original value. So because it's a power of 2, it's very easy to do the conversions. They're very fast. But like decimal, you don't have nearly as many digits when you're playing with stuff. So these are kind of ideal for a lot of operations when you are working in something that's closer to binary, but you really don't want all of the digits of a binary number.